Hello guys, welcome back. Um, if you didn't watch the previous saga of videos, um, then you don't know that I ran uh, the Wine and Dine races last weekend at Run Disney. I The races were a 5K on Friday, a 10K on Saturday, and a half marathon on Sunday. Um, if you've been following me for a little bit, you know that I signed up to do this race with my friend Danny, and that's when Danny lived here, and then she left, and when, unfortunately, she had to move back to her home state, and so that left me here by myself, and I will be 100% honest, I really didn't go to the gym after she left. I had no motivation, I didn't have anybody to go with, I fell off the bandwagon. So I went into these races and I knew I could do the 5k. I was pretty sure I could do the 10k, but I'll be hundred percent honest. I thought the balloon ladies were going to get me for the half marathon. So full disclosure, the balloon ladies did not get me. If you didn't go watch that video, go watch it. See how close I was though. to the balloon ladies getting me. If you don't know, I guess I'll fill you in on that one. So the balloon ladies are at the end of the race. They walk it at a 16 minute mile pace, which is what you have to maintain in order to not get swept, um, as they say. And basically they say that you're done with your race. If you can't keep up with them, then you're done. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of ticks tips and tricks. Um, as a newbie, I learned these from my friend who had already done um, a Disney race. So for one, be forewarned, if you don't stay on Disney property and you don't have a ride to the race, if you're parking in the parking lot, you're going to have to walk like a ridiculous amount. Um, I think that the 5k and the 10k were roughly either a mile and a half to two miles before we even got to the start line. And for the half marathon, it was 3.85 miles. Um, I word on the grapevine was they moved the start line because of construction. I'm not 100% sure. Never done with the wine and dine run before. But there you go. So, um, without training for like the last, I don't even know, three months, I think. I did not high have high hopes for this half marathon. I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, yeah. So the 5k, the next morning I felt fine. Um, we hung out at the hotel, we went to the pools, all that fun stuff. The 10k, I came back and I took a nap. I was exhausted. I'm still exhausted. I did not sleep good. The entire time that I was there. I don't know if it was anxiety or the fact of knowing that I had to be up at like 3 a.m. because we had to be there at 5 a.m. Um, or the race started at 5 a.m. which means we needed to be there at like 4 a.m. and I'm not kidding you, you probably need to be there sooner. So that is one. Here's tip number one. The sooner you get there, um, there's different corrals. So I was in corral B for the 5k, which means we were closer to the front. So the A, B, C, D. Yeah. So corral B, it was okay because we were closer to the front, but of course the 5k wasn't timed. So that wasn't a big deal, but for the 10k, it was timed and we were in corral D and there was actually no E. So we were the last people to go and then the balloon ladies. So kind of advice, do not hang out at the back unless you think that you can make up time or you know you have a good time overall. Do not hang out at the back because then you'll be right with the balloon ladies when you start. Um, you're going to want to push your way as far forward into your corral as possible. That gives you the advantage of having all those people in between you and the balloon ladies. So we did that. Um, I, we ended up starting 13 minutes before the balloon ladies for the 10k and I was able to 
make up to where I had a mile between me and the balloon ladies almost the entire race. In the beginning, it was a little less, but once I got further into the race, it was a mile and I consistently kept that mile. Even I ended the race, um, there was about a mile between us, I think, maybe like half a mile. I don't really know. I know this, my overall average pace for the 10K was 15 minutes and 26 seconds. So for the 10K, I did stay under the 16 minute per mile average. So I know that I can do a 10K very easily now and, and maintain the minutes. So I we left, we went back to the hotel and I was so sore. I'm not even gonna lie. My feet hurt so bad. Um, if you didn't know, you're gonna know now. I had planar, I have plantar fasciitis and uh, it likes to show its ugly face every now and then. And by the end of this race, it was screaming at me and I was miserable. Um, so I ended up, I went to Walmart and bought some KT tape and I taped up my right foot as best as I could. Um, for the 10K. Um, for the half marathon, I taped both feet. Thankfully I did, honestly. Um, and by the end of the, the 10K, my right foot was still hurting so bad. Um, at the half marathon, I think if you watch my vlog at one point, I tell you that my right foot is numb. It hurts so bad. It's numb as I was walking on it. I think the whole last two or three miles, my foot hurt so bad. Um, today I'm still super, super sore. It hurts to get up and down. It hurts to do stairs. It hurts to walk to the car. Um, but nothing is miserable. Like I'm in pain, soreness, but I'm not in actual pain. My heels, um, actually don't feel like I'm walking on pins and needles today, which I am kind of surprised about because normally my plantar fasciitis makes me feel like I'm walking on pins and needles for days. So I don't know if it's the KT tape that really helped. I mean, if so, I'm going to continue to do it because um, that feels a lot better than walking on pins and needles. Um, for the half marathon, we were in Corral D again, um, but there was Corral E. So there was a whole group of people behind us. I cannot remember it. Listen, the half marathon you're going to see in my vlog, I gave you bits and pieces as I went. Um, it's probably not the best vlog I'm ever going to do. Um, I was more focused on trying to finish the race, 100% um, trying to finish the race. Uh, for the half marathon, I took one bathroom break, the same with the 10K. I really thought I was going to have to take two bathroom breaks at the the half marathon based on the 10K, but I didn't, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Does that mean that I wasn't hydrating enough or I don't know. I don't know. The half marathon, uh, I think we started out with like almost a mile. 0.7, 0.8, something like that between me and the balloon ladies when I started. Um, Danny hung out with me pretty much halfway through the race, um, which I thank her a ton. Um, she didn't have to. She definitely can run a lot faster than me. She definitely kept up her training where I didn't. Um, so definitely thankful that she stuck with me for half of it. She didn't have to. Um, which also hurt her time. She could have done a lot better, but yeah. Um, she left me at like the half halfway point. Um, and I started trying to do my back to my intervals. Um, I will say the intervals helped me. Um, there's a lot of times in the park where you get stuck in these narrow walkways where you can't, you can't run. You can only walk because other people are walking. Um, so that kind of stinks as far as 
somebody who's trying to set a time or set a pace, um, that would make it very hard for you. Um, the boardwalk, Ev both the 10K and the half marathon, we went across the boardwalk. The 10K, it did not rain, the boardwalk was still slippery. The half marathon, it rained. We got rained on more than once. And the boardwalk was super slippery. Even walking on it, I was slipping. And there was people running on it. I can't, if you fall, <laughs> I think someone told me if you fall and a cast member sees you fall, you're done. So I did not want to fall because I did not want to get swept by falling. Um, overall, I, um, and the last little bit, there was this other person that just stuck kind of with me till, I think she stuck with me for mile eight to like mile 10 or 11. I think it was 11, 10 or 11. She stuck with me and we did intervals. One, two, one, two, one, three, one, three, because at one point I couldn't do one, two anymore. Run for a minute, walk for two. Um, and then, um, you'll actually end up passing her because she stops and gets beer in <laughs> at, right in front of the creation shop. They had popcorn and beer and a bunch of people <laughs> from the race were stopping and buying beer to walk across the finish line with. I was <laughs> kind of laughing, um, but I kept it up. Did not run across the finish line. I totally walked it, which is okay. Uh, my average pace for the half marathon was 17... 16. So that means if I would have started with the blue ladies, I would have gotten swept. Um, that being said, I'm hoping that um, the next race I can improve my times. Don't know if there'll be a half marathon in my future, but I do believe that there is another Disney race that I am going to do. So you'll have to stay tuned. Make sure that you, um, click all the buttons that you need to click to make sure that you uh, can see my next video. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there, there, there might be another actual run Disney event for Amanda in the future. Um, I just don't think it's going to be uh, anytime soon. So you definitely aren't going to see me at, in January for any kind of dopey challenges. Um, but who knows, maybe there'll be a dopey challenge in the near future or a long future. So, um, that is my run Disney experience. Those are a little bit of my, t oh, my last tip. Let me make sure I, so day one, I wore a fanny pack for the 5k and it was fine. Day two, I wore a fanny pack for the 10k and it irritated the crap out of me. Um, unless you, I, I mean, I, they had some of these things at the expo, which I didn't really even get to go through the expo too much because um, my children were being horrible. But I think they have specific fanny packs or pouches for you to run with that don't like bounce around and stuff. But the fanny pack I ran with kept bouncing and then spinning. So I, if I put it on my back, it would spin to the front. I put it on the, my front, it would just irritate me as I was trying to run. Um, so for the half marathon, I actually did not. And if you see in my video, I don't have the fanny pack on. Um, I ended up just bringing a sling bag an actually an Amazon one, to be honest, uh, one that I had found that, that Ruben brought home. So I literally ran with, with an Amazon sling bag for the half marathon and I did okay. So I think maybe in the future there'll be a hydration vest you know, backpack what that I can put the couple things that I needed to bring into the hydration vest because, um, that was one thing I can probably say that though they had water and they had Gatorade and they were consistent about spacing it out. But for one, they had Dasani water, which I do not like, but I drank it because that's what they gave me and the Powerade. But, um, I definitely think that a hydration vest will be in my near future because I want to be able to drink water as I'm running when I want my water, not have to wait for a um, hydration station. So those are all of my tips and my outlook on Run Disney. 
Will I do another Run Disney event? Yes, I will do another Run Disney event. Will it be anytime soon? Unfortunately, no, it will not be anytime soon. Um, but um, I will say that if it's something that you put on your bucket list, it's definitely an experience. Um, I would say start small. <laughs> Don't pull with me and sign up for all three races in one weekend. If I had to do it over again, I would have stuck with maybe the 5K, definitely the 5K. If you want to start small, start with the 5K because it's not timed. Um, if you want to start somewhere, you could probably start with the 10K since it is timed and it's only 6.2 miles. Um, but I definitely would not start with a half marathon or all three in a row. If I had to do it again, that was tough. Um, I did it. It's amazing what you can do with your body when you push it to the extreme. Um, I will say that the half marathon was definitely a mind over matter thing for me. Um, I'm grateful that I got the tips from Danny that I did so that I knew to push my push my, us far enough forward in the corral to be able to have some distance between us and the balloon ladies because as you see in my overall time if I hadn't I would not have made it um, granted there's a lot of people that passed that finish line after me so it, it, it means nothing as far as you finished it doesn't matter you finished but um, that being said I want to improve my time for the next one so if there's anything else that I could, or if there's any questions that you have that maybe I could answer. If not, I might be able to find the answer. Um, if you wanna do a Run Disney event, I 100% say go for it and do it. Um, as a Disney lover myself, I wish I could do a lot more. Unfortunately, Disney is just getting to be a little bit uh, crazy on their prices. So there's one thing that Run Disney could do. I understand that it takes a lot of personnel and it takes a lot of things to create these events, but there's also a lot of people that attend these events. So I think maybe you need to take a little bit less out of your pocket and put it back into ours. No hate here though, none. I just think that there's there, they could make it a little bit cheaper for us to do. And that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.